part three, strategies for options. So I've already made part one, which was strikes, part two, which was months, and part three is the last in the series of three, and I'm going to cover strategies. Now, these are the easiest to understand. Um, there's so many different strategies, but I just want to give you some three basic strategies in combining the characteristics of these options. I'm going to cover a long call. I'm going to cover a short put, and I'm also going to cover a vertical spread. And vertical spread will have a short, short, uh, short leg and a long leg, and I'm going to do a short put. And you could also do the same thing for a long call spread because they're kind of like a box. Let's jump over to the long call. We're still going to use our Snapchat example. Now, let's say we think Snapchat is a good value. Obviously, I can't can't know the future, but I think maybe it goes to 15, maybe it pulls back, and then eventually goes higher. I don't know, but I'm going to put on a trade, and I'm going to give myself the best chance to succeed. So for this case, I'm going to put on the... What are we going to do? Something with a lot of time. I'm going to look at the 10 strike. And there is a January 17, 2025. And there's also a Jan for 2026. For our purposes, I'm going to look at the almost one year out. And I'm going to try to put on a conservative long call. Now, because I'm trying to be conservative, I'm going to do, for this example, the four strike. The four strike is deep in the money, so this is not a junky option. This this option will give me the upside, and instead of using eleven hundred dollars for a hundred shares, I'm gonna only have to pay seven hundred and thirty, about seven hundred and thirty dollars, because this four strike call, which gives me the upside from four and on, it costs me seven twenty five to seven thirty five. So we're gonna say it's seven thirty. So it's a little bit of leverage, not quite 50%. I'm probably, I don't know what that is. It's um, probably a third leverage because I only have to put up uh, two, two thirds of the capital. But this is a conservative option. It's in the money, deep in the money. It gives me all the upside and only some of the risk. So that's going to be an example of using a little bit of uh, leverage for a bullish idea. Now, we're going to do a short put. Now, let's say I maybe I bought the long call, maybe I have shares, but I also want to create some income. The way I could do it is I'm going to look at the puts, and there's a sweet spot for option decay. We're going to use roughly two months. So I'm going to look at the April uh, everybody might have a preference. I don't mind 60 days. Some people like 30 days. For this example, that's that's roughly two months. So we're going to use the April month, April 19th month. And then to be conservative, I'm going to go below 10. I'm, I might even do, because 11, 11 is about 50 deltas, which means it's, it represents 50 shares out of 100. I might do, if I look at the 10, that's probably around 20 to 30 deltas. For this example, I'm, I'm going to go even further down, and I'm going to look at the 9 strike, which means if I sell the 9 put for April for two months, someone is going to pay me 20 cents to buy it at 9. I have to commit to buying the shares at nine. I am selling the put, I am offering the put, I am entering a deal to give someone protection. When someone buys a put, they want the downside of nine. They're buying the nine put and hoping the stock crashes or they're using it as insurance. If I'm selling, I'm taking the other side. If, if a buyer buys the nine, I'm selling the nine. So I, I'm only gonna get 20, 20 bucks. That's all I get. But uh, I get the income for two months, and if it never goes down there, I just keep the 20 bucks. If it does go down there, I have to buy the nine. I have to buy the shares, 100 shares at nine, but I already got paid 20 bucks. So my cost basis, the price at which I will own them, will be around eight, 
80. Now the current price is 11, so as of right now, I'm happy to own them at 880. If I'm if I'm bullish the shares on on Snapchat, I don't mind owning them now, but I would be even happier to buy them at below nine. So you see how that works? I'm getting paid to do something I already want to do, and this might be cash secure. This might be a little margin. It's up to you, but. I'm getting paid to buy something I already want to do. Selling the put is like buying the shares with a coupon. So it may be confusing for you. Luckily, you can always rewatch this section and hopefully uh, you'll understand the verbiage and you can look up some of the words, but this is the way option traders speak. So now vertical spreads. It was calls and puts only, and then I switched it to vertical spreads. Now, if you look, vertical spreads are when you combine two options. Now, in this example, we're going to do a short put spread real quick because it's kind of an advanced concept and may not have enough information or not enough time to cover it. I'm going to do, let's say we're going to do the same spread as that nine put we were talking about and we're going to do the 9.7. So what that means is if I go also go to April, which is two months, and maybe I, I don't want to sell the put naked, which means without protection or cash secured, I can do a spread, which means I sell the 9 put and I buy a smaller option below, and the combined spread is uh, 14 to 18. So almost the 20 bucks, it's a little bit less. But now I have less risk because I can always exercise the seven strike. This whole spread is $2 wide and I'm collecting 15, 16 cents, but I only have the uh, $2, whole, whole $2 risk versus $9. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. I'm just trading a box, a $2 wide box. I'm collecting a little less income for a little less risk. This is called a spread. If I was bullish, I would do something different. I would buy maybe an 11-13 call spread or a 10-12 call spread. And again, we're trading a box. This is a $2 box here, 10-12, buying the 10 call and then selling the 12 call a little higher. The whole relationship, that whole spread is 90, let's say 95 cents, and it can go up to $2. I can only lose 95 cents if, if my trade is completely wrong, and that's why option traders like spreads. They're smaller trades, and it allows people to trade their thesis, their ideas, without as much risk, okay? Those are the three strategies that I covered. I covered a long call, I covered a short put, and I did uh, vertical spreads. I did the, the bullish put spread for a credit, and I'm, I also covered the uh, bullish uh, call spread for a debit. I hope you found that useful. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed these series one, two, and three. You can rewatch the other ones and you can follow for more of these if you like this stuff. Cheers.